Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're feeling a disturbance in the force right now, it's because two of the largest individuals in show business have joined together this fine morn to give you what for in the way of Reverend and Wildwood, working in tandem to annihilate minds and empower your hands with the power of rock music. Can I? I'm just glad to be here. I like you. I like you too. We're buddies. Yeah. He's we, from Detroit. I'm from Milwaukee. You know what that means? We're close enough to know it's kind of a dual community of savagery. You come to my town every now and again and engage in quasi-Germanic musical activity. It's true. Yes. And every, yeah. now, every now and again, I go there to score some crack. Yeah. And that works <laughs> out well for us. That's why we have Detroit. Detroit Indeed. Rock City. Indeed. I don't really score crack. I don't want to make the kids out there think that we're all hopped up on junk. No. We are hopped up on coffee like you would not believe, though. That's a fact, Jack. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk. You know, I thought it was fascinating last night at our dinner repast, which was delicious. It I was. Yeah. We spoke about kind of how you came into the world of Reverend and oh. uh, started working with Joe Naylor. And just give us a little history of Joe, how you met Joe, how you kind of came on board and became the man. Can do. Uh, Joe has has forged this awesome reputation as a guitar designer over the last 30 years. Uh, studied at Western Michigan University and then um, pursued more guitar studies at Roberto Venn School of Luthery in yes. Tempe, Arizona. Uh, came back to the Detroit area and opened a small guitar shop, like a boutique sort of buy-sell trade. Nothing new, you know, and, and made a living doing guitar repairs for years. And worked on all of the funky 60s, off-brand stuff was his favorite. You know what uh -huh, I mean? Yeah. And taking the old Montgomery Ward guitars and, you know, and the, the Ks and the silver tones and, and the, you know, sure. the airlines and all these models and making them playable for local Detroit players. And he got a great reputation doing that. So while he was working on these instruments, he started sort of putting together a guitar in the back of his mind that had the, what he thought were the best ideas from all of these different things that got he got it. to spend all his time with. An amalgam, if you will. Right, right. Um, and uh, after a little four-way into tube amplifiers, the nailer amplification, um, which, you know, he, he was a little ahead of the curve in the boutique. Mm -hmm. Boutique? Boutique? You say boutique, I say bah -ha -ha -ho. Uh, Amp wave in the early 90s. He, he did the amp thing for a little bit. And then really somewhere in his mind, he just wanted to pursue this guitar idea. So he left the amp building business and took this idea he had for a guitar and got a patent and started making the original Reverend models. And uh, so what year are we talking about here? The this is guitar. 90, I believe he got the patent in 96 and the company started in 97. All right. Um, so the first Reverend was born in 97. So we're, uh, we're approaching 19 years. We're gonna have 20th anniversary next year. Which is no Blow small out. feat in this business filled no. with mutants and skullduggerous of the <laughs> highest order. He said skull Duggerous at least a dozen times in the last 12 hours. It feels good. You yeah. know what? It's, oh, no, I'm going to... Keeps gonna, you regular. I'm going to introduce it into my vernacular. I dig it. Yeah. I can dig it. We're going to drop big words. Um, so, the original guitar was fairly well received yes. and uh, got us some really cool players. It's what brought Rick Vito to the table. Um be, all of the guitars were semi-hollow and had sort of a unique construction, and they were really cool. Uh, but they were they were kind of they were focused on a on, on one certain kind of player, and it never really went mass appeal. You know, I like to say whether I'm right or I'm wrong, and this this is my opinion that those guitars, as awesome as they were, were never really bright enough for country and never really aggressive enough for rock. Uh -huh. So they did one thing and they did it really really well. You know. Um, but Joe wanted to do more. Joe's a closet metalhead. Well, he ain't a closet metalhead. He is an overt metalist. Yes, he, he has lit the door on fire and bursted out of the closet with his metaldom. I wonder if he's a um, fan of the Steel Panther. Joe is a huge fan of the Steel Panther. Are you a fan of the Steel Panther? I am indeed. I hum their songs often. This morning I woke up with one on my mind, and it was a filthy selection. <laughs> but anyway, so he's a, he's a metal cat. So, um, he had some ideas for some solid body guitars, right? So, uh, he then 
the way that we were doing some of the original models is we were making the bodies in our shop, you know, and then we were putting the necks and the pickups on them and sort of assembling everything. Um, when Joe had an idea for a solid body, he had a few different things he wanted to try. And we started working with um, uh, a factory in Korea called Mir Music, okay, M-I-I-R-R, M-I-R-R, look them up, they're really good people. They're amazing at what they do. And they are set up to build electric guitars, right? So Joe went to them with some designs to have them sort of realize what he had in his head. He put them down on paper, and to this day, we still send paper, one-to-one -one drawings of these instruments uh, to these guys over there. And we got some prototypes from him, and he gave me a guitar, and he said, take this out, you know, tell me what you think of it. I remember it was a Warhawk 290 in forest green. Indeed. A I bold still, bird of prey. I still have it at home. <laughs> um, and it very quickly became my number one guitar. I just, I liked the guitar better than anything the company had ever done. And we started spreading them around and it really, people just liked everything. And then Joe, Joe wasn't confined to the one body style like we were before when we were using the same sort of body rim to make all these different models. All of a sudden he could do whatever he wanted. And um, hence, you know, something like this. Or, or something, something like, this. like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, and so we have been, we've been using the, the, the same factory since 2004, 2003, 2004. And so we realized the guitar vision at our shop in the Detroit Toledo area and we have them, them manufacture the guitars to that vision, and we bring the guitars to our shop in Detroit, Toledo, and my team of experts dutifully goes through every instrument. Uh, and when the instrument is done, our Reverend Head Tech for the last 18 years, uh, Zach Green, serial numbers and initials each guitar before it goes out the door. So when you see a Reverend, that ZSG, that would be the seal Zach, of approval. Zach S. Green's seal of approval. Um, so work hands on with, with everything we do. Um, at, at our shop in the Detroit Toledo area, see, I'm saying Detroit Toledo area, uh, Reverend is currently in the process as this is being filmed of moving into a really cool facility in Toledo. Toledo, to, which you, a lot of people don't know, it's very close to Detroit. Yeah, it's 45 minutes south. Yeah. Um, we just, we found a building that's perfectly set up for what we do and we're thrilled to be getting in there. So the guitars go there and we, I like to say we turn them from uh, commodities into instruments there. Got it. You know, everything is, so when somebody goes into a store like, um, I don't know, Wildwood Guitars in Louisville, Colorado, mm -hmm. and they grab a Reverend off the wall, it plays perfect every time. We did that. And how much does Jamie Farr, Aka Klinger play in this whole thing? Toledo's uh, finest, for those of you. We are not call. moved in. My understanding is on the first day of business, Jamie Farr is the welcome wagon. I like it. And he shows up with like coupons for oil changes and pizzas and shit like that. We'll be in, we'll be in drag. Hands him out. Uh, that would be really cool. I don't know about drag. I think he just wears a giant oversized Mudhens jersey. There's, that's good too, right? Absolutely. Tying it all together. Uncle Jamie, we call him in Toledo. Mm -hmm. Everybody's family. That's right. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. So now you yourself. Yes. Uh, so that is Joe's stuff? That is Joe's legacy. Joe's legacy. You yes. came on board kind of as a, <laughs> as a fan of the guitars and as a friend of Joe initially, correct? Uh, as an endorsee. As, as an endor yes, yeah. I was an endorsee. I, uh, I played in a rap metal band There's called... There's nothing wrong with it. Say it loud, say it proud. I played in a rap metal band called the Kids from Krypton. That's right, Yo. mutants. Dig it. Krypton damage, right? I see what you did there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a fun little run in the late 90s and early 2000s, you know, and uh, with just don't be offended if you decide to take that information and look that up. Um, How, was it was pretty heavy. What was the lyrical matter? Uh, I don't know. You can't matter. even... Yeah, yeah, you know, so lots of songs, songs of about, uh, lo lots, lots of songs about and sounds like good Colorado fun to me. Yeah, yeah, it is good Colorado <laughs> fun now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think we got the here yet though, do we? Well, you know, still got to go to where there's weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're on that slippery slope now. Yeah, 
Legalize it all. Soon, pretty soon they're going to change the name of Colorado to Free For All. Yeah. I Bold like it. community. A libertine stronghold. <laughs> That's all right. We don't judge it. Yeah. No. 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 We celebrate it. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I purchased a Reverend guitar at like a basically a pawn shop in Detroit. I saw the guitar and it said East Point, Michigan on it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right over there. I didn't know somebody here was building guitars. So at the time I was selling uh, I, my day job because <laughs> I know it's hard to believe that the rap metal band wasn't making the mortgage. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, my day job, I sold automotive paint and sandpaper for, for many years. I worked in and out of body shops and painted cars and did this stuff. Um, and I thought, I was looking at the guitar and I'm like, I bet that dude uses sandpaper. That's my excuse to go beat on the door. And I literally went to the shop one day. And like, Hi, I'm Ken. I sell sandpaper. You use sandpaper, right? <laughs> and Joe was like, yeah, dude, come on in. I use this, 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 and this. And just like, so you play guitar? Yeah, I got one of your guitars. And, you know, and this was like, it was, it was really, it was when the, the company was still in a garage that is um, about the size of this area that we're sitting in. And I mean, machines just, it was unbelievable the, the all of reverend was in basically a two-car garage and there were five guys working in there popping out guitars and i was just blown away like oh this is the best and then joe's like oh check out what we're coming out with next year and he had these like metal topped things and i was like oh dude so i started calling on him under the guise of selling sandpaper even though he probably spent 150 dollars with me the first year you know sure. what i mean and um and he and i just developed a rapport and and he was getting ready to go to the NAMM show in Nashville, and he asked me if I'd ever been to a NAMM show, and I hadn't, you know? He, well, you should come as my guest. Oh, that would be awesome. So me and the bass player from the rap metal band mm -hmm. uh, flew down to Nashville and went to the NAMM show. And at the time, that summer NAMM show in Nashville was... Rockin'. Rockin'. It was a powerhouse, man. Yeah. It was cool. I, I People now... You know, people in the industry talk about the NAMM shows or whatever, and the summer show was like the little baby brother to the big one in right. California in the wintertime. But at the time, man, that summer show was great. I know. We did, that's kind of how I got going. Like, this is I played a big show down there for Fender at the Wild Horse Loot in the, yeah, hay, yeah. In the heyday of the, uh, yeah. of the Nashville NAMM show. It was a, it was a party. It was a, it was a party. So I, um, I just happened to be hanging out in somebody else's booth, uh, checking out a guitar or whatever, and uh, the legendary Will Ray yes, indeed. comes walking into the booth and is talking to the person I'm talking with. And he looks over at me and he sees my, my badge and the Reverend Guitars thing. And he and, and he looks like, Kian, Kian, Reverend Guitars, what is that? Somebody tell me about that. Explain that to me a little bit. And I was like, right. Will Ray! I'm like, this is Will Ray. You know, and I, I've been around that stuff a lot now. I'm like, Will. <laughs> Quit calling me every 20 minutes, dude. You know? But I mean, at the time, I was like, oh. Right. So I explained the whole body construction and the whole Joe's idea and stuff with him. And he, that sounds really cool. So an hour later, I go walking by the Reverend booth, and Joe is there selling a couple guitars to Will Ray. And as I come walking in, Will points me and goes, there he is right there, that can. He's, he's a nice dude, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, and after Will leaves, Joe comes up and he's like, I'm going to have to bring you to all these things. And just right. send you out to talk to guys like that. If you're not, you know, if you will go up to guys like that and just start, uh, I'll, go, I'll go up to anybody and start yipping and yapping, you I know? Like it. So I started going to all the NAMM shows, which then um, turned into a, six, seven years later in uh, 2005, maybe it was 2006. I had a really good one and I, I opened up. I bunch don't know, of dealers a bunch him. of dealers and sold a lot of guitars and he was kind of like well it was after i had these this product to sell you know people were interested people wanted people wanted an affordable solid body that played like a truly professional guitar i mean and that was our our whole shtick you know what i mean it wasn't about one of the the big misconceptions about in, in my opinion again and i've right just so you know um one of the big misconceptions about companies going to asia or going to other countries to build guitars is that they're trying to do it cheap 
with, with Reverend, it was never about doing it cheap. It was about getting the best quality instrument we could get for the money. Right. Joe wanted to do a pro level guitar for under a grand. That was the initial goal and have it be anybody could just pick it up, take it out on the stage and happen. And, uh, something happens to your guitars. Like in 2008, when the Stooges lost all their gear, we overnighted Ronnie a guitar the next night. He took the guitar off the rack. Good to go. You know, he's not out playing with some special version of something that sure. we did. This is what we do. Um, and that idea resonated at that show. And Reverend started to grow, and Joe needed a salesperson. And so, because I knocked it out of the park at that show, Joe was all like, you know, I got to offer you a job now, right? And I'm like, <laughs> you can't afford me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then that turned into, um, you know... That turned into a few years later, as 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 the as the business and, and things really started to to come together, um, Joe wanting to spend more of his time designing guitars and designing pickups and following these ideas that he had. Because at any given time, Mr. Naylor's got three or four threads of really cool ideas, and a bunch of which we're going to get into here today. Mm -hmm. He's got these things sort of hanging up in the air. And what he was doing at Reverend was administration, 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 administration. Oh, payroll. Oh, accountants. Oh, this. Oh, that. And, you know, designer guys don't like that crap. And they just don't. And if you look at the legacy of people who have made impacts in this industry, you know, there's, you know, and the, and the, the, the biggest, you know, being Leo. Right. And then and Don Randall, his sales team, and, yeah. and every, you know, in the, in the heyday of... Of the big F. When, yeah. when all this stuff was made, exactly, you know, um, and so we we came up with a way to get Joe back to doing what he wanted to do, um, and and my my wife Penny and I run the Reverend business, and Joe designs guitars, and then Joe helps us uh, realize his his vision of what the guitars are for. Because I mean, the person who designs Joe knows who he's marketing to when he drops a design, so. Joe obviously works with us to get the guitars out to market, to get his message out uh, on them. And so he's got, you know, the crazy workbench with the sure. nine things going at the same time. And it's awesome. And uh, and now I used to, I, my, my joke on this, so it's always, I used to go to the NAMM shows and have a hell of a good time because Joe was worrying about everything and I was just there to sell guitars sure. and have fun. Now, now he's having fun. Now he's having fun. And, and you're going, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, so-and-so is supposed to be here. But um, it's, been, it's been great for all of us. And, and uh, since 2010, I, 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 Joe has done the best work of his career. And again, we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff to, you know, today and these other videos that are, if you, let me see this face of the Right over here, there's a bunch of videos that you can click on. <laughs> and they're going to be about what I'm talking about right now. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Can you dig it? Uh, yeah. Can can dig it. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how Wildwood and Reverend came together. Oh. Uh, Wildwood and Reverend have a pretty long history. Joe started uh, selling guitars to Wildwood in... Uh, 99 or so. This is this is um, the owner of Wildwood Guitars, one of his personal collection. This is a Hot Shot Junior, uh, serial number 2284, which puts it in the early 2000s at some point, uh, probably maybe the year 2000. We had a lot um, of hair then, Ken. I had a, well, you might have. <laughs> I Well, the skullet was beginning by yeah, then. Yes, yes. Penny says I haven't I haven't lost any more hair since I met her. That she's, she she's put the brakes on it. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. <laughs> I know she is. She's a good girl. Anyway, um, so uh, Steve really liked Naylor's attitude and his original concept, and because even with, as I said in the other video, the whole idea behind the whole concept behind Reverend is always been to do an affordable professional level guitar, um, which is how these guitars were developed. Um, there's no, there's no painting in the process of making this instrument uh, at the 
you know, on the factory level at, at Reverend. Okay. Um, the the bodies are phenolic top and back, and they're they're basically glued together and sanded down. Uh -huh. You know, like a countertop kind right. of a thing. And um, and they they were super cool. And Steve really Steve really dug the whole concept. And Joe did some neat guitars with lipsticks and things like mm -hmm. that. That had a really cool retro sort of vintage vibe. And a lot of uh, the dealers out there that did a lot of vintage guitar trading and buying and selling oh. and stuff dug this because you know you're basically taking. Uh, um, you know, it's kind of a Dano meets Fender concept. Sure. You know, like a very, very playable uh, Dano right. Electro style thing, you know, with its own, with its, with, with kind of its own twist. So uh, Wildwood started carrying these guitars, yeah, back in 99 or 2000 and, um, and did fairly well with them. And then as we started developing the new line, you know, we always did a little bit of business with these guys. And then when we started developing the line of instruments that, that we're doing now, um, when Rick Vito sure. became more involved with, with the Rick Vito signature model, and then when Pete Anderson came on board, and I could, we could talk, Pete, you can also find on this website, uh, Pete talking about his history with Reverend Guitars. Um, and we developed, you know, uh, Joe and Pete developed this guitar together. Well, all of a sudden, we we're working with all of these people that all the guys at Wildwood love, right? Mm -hmm. And it became a really cool thing for Reverend to bring their artists to where we're sitting. And I mean, you know, there was a time when it wasn't just Greg sitting here. We get you know, those are dark times. Dark times, Pete. You know, unknown people like unknown Hinson and. And Pete Anderson and Rick Vito and Reeves Gabrels have sat in these chairs, uh, sometimes with me and sometimes on their own, yes. you know, playing their Reverend models. And when we started, when we started, I think it was Anderson that really got Wildwood thinking, well, I think we can do more with this company than, yeah. than we are, you know, uh, and because the Anderson guitars are so unique. And then Pete is Pete. I mean, he's Pete. Right. You know, that's a bold he, warrior. He's not repeat. Oh, he is a bold warrior. <laughs> There is no question. Also an East Detroit boy, by the I way. I did not know that. Absolutely, yes. Um, and so, uh, as we started bringing more and more artists out here, uh, Wildwood Guitars became one of our flagship dealers. Um, we, have a, we have sort of what we call high volume dealers at Reverend Guitars, and they're dealers that we call out for stocking the line in depth. Yes. And, and, and always have an interesting inventory you know from us and wildwood has definitely been that dealer for us for years and one of our flagship dealers which is why you know i'm happy to be here with the 2016 product line tell you what we're yeah. glad to have you yeah man and there are some delicious looking morsels that are in our immediate future a whole bunch well thanks for telling us the tale we'll be back with some more individual guitar analysis <laughs> here at wildwood guitars i'm gregory cockery with ken haas from reverend adios <laughs>